Alright guys, this month is the 30th anniversary of the Amstrad CPC 464, released in June of 1984, and uh, as such there's a lot more spotlight being put on the machine around the internet and in the press, plus there's still a lot of people discovering this machine for the first time and wondering where to start. Well, wonder no more, I present to you the top 10 Amstrad CPC 464 games you need to start out with whether it's to play or to own. Now uh, these are not necessarily the best ever games but the ones that to me most defines the CPC 464. They're also not the rarest, just 10 games that define in a broad sense what the CPC 464 is about and to start off your collection and experience of the machine with. And uh, we'll start off in a rough chronological order. So, at number 10, uh, we have to go with, first of all, an Amsoft game. Now, if you bought an Amstrad CPC 464 new at any time during the 80s, and uh, I believe I got mine in 1989, you would have had a few Amsoft games come free with the machine. And uh, if you're buying one on eBay, there's likely going to be a few in the package, or a bundle of games. For many people there are two games that are most fondly remembered and talked about. Uh, one is Harrier Attack, that lots seem to really really like. Um, I'm not sure why, because it's, uh, it's an incredibly basic and naff looking game now. Well in fact it was back then. Uh, but people had a lot of fun with this, and strangely I did too, and is uh, definitely worth checking out. Uh, but my personal favourite though is Roland on the Ropes, which had an amazing atmosphere, uh, big bright colourful graphics and all kinds and numbers of monsters and surprises waiting for you. And uh, it really captured my imagination as a kid, uh, desperate as I was to escape the depths and maze of horrors below to freedom into the night sky above your tomb. And uh, out of all the Amsoft games, this really did have the most action and excitement, and is still a lot of fun to play today. Uh, but essentially, well done Amsoft uh, for, for making sure there was tons of games available at the launch of the CPC 464, um, which they failed to do on the launch of the GX 4000 console, but that's a story for another day. So, loads of great games from Amsoft, most of them crap, but those two, Harry Attack, Roland on the Ropes, are the two to really sort of check out and give a go. Honourable mentions to O oh Mummy and uh, maybe a couple of others. Anyway. So, what if you were bored with all those uh, Amsoft games that came with your 464 at the time? Well, you would have wanted to go down the shops and purchase this game at number 9, which is Fruity Frank from Kumar. Now, this is an absolute classic and beloved by many an Amstrad owner and takes many a uh, pride of place in many of the collection. And this was made by Stephen Wallace in 1984, of course, and uh, it's kind of a clone of Mr. Do, uh, a very famous arcade game in the early 80s. And it's a very, very simple uh, game, single screen affair, and uh, what you need to do is basically just run around, collect all the fruit, uh, avoid the uh, monsters in the garden, and the falling apples. Once you've collected all the fruit on the level, you can move to the next level. Quite simple, really. Um, obviously, the more you run, a, run about the garden, uh, the more of a space you give the monsters to run about as well. But you can kill them by pushing apples on their heads, like so. And you've also got a ball um, you can throw at monsters. It will uh, return to you after a few seconds. And you can very, very quickly complete levels, uh, but the fun is ob obviously, of course, if, uh, squishing the monsters with apples and things like that. Don't spend too long though, or an evil strawberry will come along, <laughs> like there. And if you uh, touch the spawn point there, it will stop the monsters spawning, but an evil frog will jump at you. So, a very, very simple game. Uh, might be quite hard to track down on eBay these days. Um, 
but certainly worth spending a few quid on. Uh, it's a game you won't play for hours at a time, rather you'll play it for quick blasts, but boy is it fun, and boy was it light years ahead of most of the Amsoft games at the time. So, number eight. And hopefully a fairly easy game to get hold of if you hunt about on eBay. So, uh, what is it? Well, it's Chucky Egg from ANF Software. And this is a classic platforming game, single screen affair, run around, collect the eggs, avoid the uh, hens, which are the monsters here, and then move on to the next level. Very simple stuff, ladders, platforms, uh, moving lifts, all the classic ingredients of a uh, early 80s uh, arcade platformer. Not an arcade conversion though, a home computer release. Um, the Android version wasn't the original, I think the BBC one was, I think. But I think it's the best version. Um, it has some really, really lovely sprite movement and an essential for a platforming game, really tight and responsive controls and the mechanism for jumping and running around um, is absolutely spot on, 10 out of 10, perfect. Um, probably one of the best platforming games and a great example of a, a early 80s uh, programming talent. Later on the level, the uh, giant hen flies out of its cage and <laughs> runs around attacking you, uh, I think from level 9 onwards. Uh, so there's a good number of levels and things change up. And uh, actually there's quite a bit of uh, puzzling involved. There's certain sections and platforms are quite difficult to get, uh, get to. And you have to learn some really clever techniques. You can sort of jump uh, into the wall and bounce off it or bounce off other platforms if you time it right but it's a classic game and uh, really one you definitely need for your collection and certainly one to check out it's still very very addictive and continues to be addictive to this day it's always fun going back and having a quick blast on Chucky Egg it never seems to age despite its looks so let's move on to uh, probably one of the hardest games to get hold of And at number seven, we have Donkey Kong. Yes, uh, a real conversion of the, uh, oh, one of the greatest and most famous arcade games of all time. And the reason it's here at number seven is it's probably the, the most arcade perfect conversion I've ever seen on uh, any home computer, whatever. It's, it's pretty much nigh on perfect. In fact, even Retro Gamer magazine listed this as the uh, greatest uh, arcade conversion at number one to the home computers. Uh, it's even better than the NES version. And it has, uh, obviously, everyone knows what Donkey Kong is. Uh, we'll have a look at all four levels here. And uh, it's, it's pretty much perfect. It's got to be in your, it's got to be in your collection. Very, very tough to get hold of. Um, I've seen the cassette version appear occasionally on eBay, which is, you know, for the 464. Um, and went for a very, very high price indeed. But what do you expect when you have a conversion as good as this one? Um, for a computer like the Amstrad, it's going to go for big bucks. And my only complaint is kind of jumping and to jump left or right, you just have to move very, very slightly first before you jump, otherwise you'll probably just jump in, jump up in the air and probably end up killing yourself. But um, this is essential, um, a game to own and also try on the Amstrad. Really is, for, for a conversion, this is 10 out of 10. And uh, good luck finding it. There you go, Donkey Kong from Ocean Software. So at number six we have Head Over Heels from John Rittman and Bernie Drummond and Ocean Software in 1987. It's a 3D isometric adventure game, lots of puzzle solving, we're controlling uh, Head there and there's also another character called Heels which, you, which we can swap between. There's Heels, he can sort of run faster, uh, Head can jump higher 
and there's other qualities they have and you can combine the two together to solve puzzles now obviously the 3d isometric genre um, is quite full of games uh, most notably from the company called ultimate play the game but really this is kind of uh, the refinement uh, and the best bits of all those games combined into one classic package and is one of the most fondly remembered uh, games on the Amstrad um, very very much sought after on eBay in places uh, you might be paying quite a bit of money for the uh, disc version for example uh, but you should be able to pick up the 464 version on cassette perhaps on the budget hit squad label for a, a fairly cheap price and here's an example of some of the puzzle solving, like for example we can move that lever that moves that character around on, the, on that lethal floor. And we can use him to push objects, like that uh, platform there, which we can jump on and jump on that weird creature's head to get to that bag at the top there. So pretty simple uh, puzzle solving stuff, uh, it does get quite devious and it will take you about an hour to complete the game but this is a game really um, you need in your collection, there's plenty of great 3D isometric games, Get Dexter being another uh, example and plenty from Ultimate Play the Game but Head Over Heels is the one to own. Up next, one of my uh, personal favourite games of all time on the Amstrad although not to everyone's taste because it did review poorly at the time but at number five we have Werewolves of London as you can see that on the Mastertronic budget label but originally was a full price release from Areola Soft who went bust at the time of the, game, of the game's release so apparently there are a few full price copies of this game out there and so if you ever find one on eBay it's probably going to go for a very high price but otherwise you'll find it fairly easy to track down the Mastertronic budget version as you can hear from the music there obviously inspired by the Warren Zevon song of the same name Werewolves of London and there we are as a werewolf by night and human by day and what's really cool is uh, day changes to night and vice versa and as it turns to night you turn into a werewolf and then back into human form in the daytime but you run around munching on people as a werewolf I think I've just stolen his tube ticket there plenty of places to visit like uh, Hyde Park the London Underground Tube Station, which we're going to have a little saunter in now. Uh, the sewer network, and you can also go on the uh, rooftop of buildings and jump between them. Now what you need to do in this game is track down several people. When you're near, uh, near one of the uh, targets, a cross flashes on the screen, and then flashes wildly when you're on the same screen as them. And then uh, when you turn into a werewolf, which we will shortly do, as you can see, day changing to night there very nicely. Uh, munching them and avoid the police really really cool concept for the game if a little flawed and a little confusing you make sure you, uh, you make a map but this was an Amstrad original before being ported to other systems and is a really fun and atmospheric game definitely one to own but one game you'll find pretty much universally loved by pretty much all Amstrad owners is this one from Ocean Software in 1987 at number four, it's Grizor, of course. Yes, the uh, conversion of the uh, classic Contra arcade game. It's a run and gun blast em up, and it looks and plays absolutely gorgeous on the Amstrad. What fantastic use of colours available from the Amstrad's colour palette. Um, it looks fantastic, it moves fantastic, plays fantastic, uh, sprites look great as, as do the animation and the controls are as tight as anything. Um, what a shame then that it doesn't scroll and the Amstrad was quite notorious at the time for the lack of scrolling in games or struggling to. Uh, so flick screen scrolling here, however the game is still brilliant to play and is a must own for your collection or if you just like trying the Amstrad out on an emulator download the disc or ROM or whatever fire it up because uh, if you're a fan of Contra or any run and gun shooting game you're gonna really really enjoy this one plays brilliantly and uh, pretty much everything you would expect from the arcade original is there bar one level and a couple of minor things I think a couple of sub bosses as well but um, yeah great run and gun blasting action great weapons to use 
Um, the Ocean Original probably cost you quite a bit on eBay, um, but you should be able to find the uh, Hit Squad budget re-release on cassette fairly cheaply. So definitely get this one in your collection. Um, it's definitely one you're going to come back and play every now and again and won't get bored of. I don't to this day. But up next is basically a toss up between two games. Do we go for the original or do we go for the sequel? So at number three, we'll start with the original which is Renegade from Emerging Software aka Ocean Software and is an arcade conversion and looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, lovely colourful graphics, great sprites and animation, fluid movement, responsive controls, although the control scheme is rather awkward, it's designed for the unique layout of the uh, 464's keyboard, so playing in an emulator you will want to redefine the keys, otherwise you won't have much fun. But it is great fun punching guys off the subway onto the train tracks there. Um, and also punching them whilst they're on the floor. Um, blue blood's there, you can actually turn on the red blood um, <laughs> as well. And eventually the boss will appear and you can kick him to pieces. Um, this is a superb game, although flick screen scrolling just like Grizer unfortunately, but not to the game's detriment. This is fantastic, probably the best beat him up on the Amstrad. And we also get to uh, fly kick bikers off their bikes. Great fun. Now pretty much the sequel, Target Renegade, is more of the same. Um, seems a little bit more eerie and less fun. But what we have in the sequel is weapons, but also simultaneous two-player action, which may put it a notch above Renegade. Uh, the levels are also a little bit longer but it perhaps doesn't feel quite as fun. So which ones do you go for? I say both of them. Now the full price games, the original full price games will fetch quite a price on eBay but both were released on the budget Hit Squad label on cassette so you should be able to find these fairly cheaply. Go for it. So we're very close to the uh, number one spot and at number two in my list is probably the biggest selling game ever on the Amstrad next to uh, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles it's Robocop again from Ocean Software and this is probably the greatest movie license ever on the in the 80s on any home computer system and the Amstrad version is fantastic um, lovely great uh, colorful graphics and animation uh, nice variety in levels for instance here's a sort of first person shooter and plenty of uh, scrolling left to right, shooting action on the streets of Detroit. And we've got motorcycles back as well, like just in Renegade. And a uh, good variety in weapons as well. And I've got a freeway shooter there. Uh, brilliant music. In fact, you've probably heard the title screen music at the start of my uh, video here. Um, and of course, yes, we've also got the facial recognition level. Um, and then we have a fight in the drug factory. We hear Robocop encounters stairs for the first time. And then we have our first fight with the uh, ED209, which we have a punch up with. <laughs> uh, this is great. Um, I mean, everyone knows Robocop. Uh, in fact, we've had a recent remake movie done as well. Um, definitely worth um, picking up. You should be able to find this on eBay fairly cheaply. Remember this game sold millions of copies so it should be really easy to find and uh, well and also if you have 128k of memory for your 464 well you get sample speech saying so Robocop and, and uh, the prime directives at the start of the game but yes definitely worth getting definitely worth playing always great for a blast Robocop and number two. So finally, what's at my top spot for the Amstrad CPC 464 game you need to own or play for for the first time? Well, at number one, it's Chase HQ. Yes, yet another ocean title, but an arcade conversion. However, this is amazing. There you go, in your Porsche 928 Turbo, probably my favorite car of all time, in my favorite game of all time. And this is great fun. The sense of speed is amazing. There we go, with the turbo being unleashed. 
it looks absolutely gorgeous, plays fantastically. Um, you're chasing a criminal, so the first half of the game, you got the, like taking forks in the road here and going off road. It's kind of an outrun style uh, against the clock. You've got to race and catch up with the criminal. There we go, off road here. And uh, shortly we'll be going through a tunnel. And then finally, when you do uh, catch up with the criminal, you've got to smash his car to pieces and ram him off the road. Now, pretty much everyone watching this will probably know what Chase HQ is and what it's all about. I don't need to tell you. But the uh, programming on this is absolutely fantastic. Um, it is first rate. Just the uh, mathematics involved uh, in getting this game with all the hills and dips and the tunnels and the physics and the AI is a truly ast astounding programming achievement and not only that it looks and plays great and, and it's brilliant fun so there we go guys you should be able to catch this quite easily on eBay so that's my number one game and I truly believe that also this is the best 8-bit conversion of Chase HQ. Anyway, remember guys, this isn't necessarily the best games ever on the Amstrad, just the top 10 CPC 464 games you need to own or try out for the very first time. So, honourable mentions as well to Rick Dangerous 2, Star Glider, Laser Squad, Savage, The Dizzy Games, Turrican, Island of Dr. Destructo, Daily Thompson, Jack the Nipper, Batman the Movie, Who Dares Wins 2, Killer Cobra, Xyface Fantasy, Operation Wolf, Mega Blasters, <gasps> so many. There we go guys, happy hunting and happy 30th birthday to the Amstrad CPC 464. Cheers. Bye.